Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Learning C++20. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be continuing our discussion on concepts. So in our last time, uh, or in our last video where we talked about concepts, we went ahead and just used some of the default ones. Um, so specifically in the stop token example, we used the signed integral concept. Basically what we wanted to do was constrain this template to only take things that were signed and integral type. And we showed how this could be used to clean up our template instantiation error. So instead of having some big long error message that might be hard to read, we basically got a very simple one that said, hey, you failed the is integral or maybe the is signed um, check that went on or those constraints. So we're gonna be taking a look at, you know, what about the situations where we can't say use one of the built-in concepts or we want to maybe write our own concept for our templated functions or classes. So let's look at two examples. One of them is called hash, the other one's called mutex. And these are both examples that I found um, online at the CPP reference site and then from an example at C++ Now 2018. So let's go ahead and open up hash.cpp. And we're gonna take a look at this very simple function here. So we've got a function here. All it does is print out the hash of a number using std hash. And then from main, we call it with say a string literal, so abc, and then we call it with this empty struct. And this empty struct has basically nothing. Um, we haven't done anything with it. It just is an open and close curly brace. So this is going to cause an error when we try to you know, throw it at std hash. So let's see what kind of the error looks like. So first let's get rid of this um, you know, we have our hashable constraint um, or our concepts. So let's replace this with just, you know, normal type name. We'll go ahead and compile it. So here we'll compile hash with C20. And then we see we get some big long error that isn't very helpful. Basically, it says, you know, could not convert bracing closed initializer list from brace, bra uh, bracing closed initializer list to std hash enum empty struct, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not a very expressive error. It doesn't really tell us, you know, you know what we want to know. It's not very helpful. So we can use uh, our concepts to help clean this up. So let's define our own concept and basically say, hey, I want to know if whatever you know type I'm instantiating this um, this function with, I want to make sure that whatever that type is, it's hashable. So here I create a concept called hashable, and I say what it requires. And so basically, it requires that for some a of type t that the, you know, the expression stood hash you know, with type T of A, whatever that result is going to be convertible to stood size T, right? That's going to be my requirement. So I go ahead and I, and I can go ahead and you know, go back and I can replace my type name T with now my concept hashable. So now when I go ahead and recompile this code, so again, this was our initial kind of error, doesn't really tell us much, not very nice. So here I can go ahead and try to recompile it again. Very different error, a lot cleaner. Basically says that, you know, here's where the error happened when I tried to call it with this variable E at line 36. Um, it was declared on line 24, and it said the constraints are not satisfied. So, you know, this function instantiated with the empty struct required for the satisfaction of hashable. Um, you know, note the required expression of, you know, std hash whatever this type is of A is invalid. So it basically tells me which concept, you know, we had a problem with. And it had a problem doing this std hash here, right? So there's one way you can kind of clean up an error message instead of having, you know, something just like bracing close initializer list to, you know, std hash enum empty struct, you know, false, you know, blah, 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 you know, not very clear. So let's look at another example. So this is one from C++ Now 2018, and I'll have a links to both the CPP reference and talk um, that go over these. Um, so let's go into this mutex.cpp. So a very similar scenario. Basically what we're passing to a function is not valid. And basically what we're going to check for here is in the equality comparison. So we want to know if whatever type we're passing in, we can do an equality comparison with. So here we'll just, you know, let's first replace it with type name T. So we're just passing something in, doing an equal, equal check. It doesn't really matter what we're doing here, just as long as, you know, this operation is valid. So we'll try it with a string first, and then we'll try it with, eh, why don't we just try it with a std mutex and see what happens. So before we look at anything, let's just try to compile it. So we'll try to compile mutex.cpp. And you see, again, very messy, big, long, and this time we actually get a very, big long mess of errors go on. 
So it goes on and on and on until at the very top it says error, no match for operator equals equals. Um, for std mutex and std mutex. Okay, so I kind of get what's going on from the first line. It's telling me that this operator hasn't been implemented, but do I really want, you know, the 200 extra lines to get printed out out of that? No, not really. They're not helpful at all. What I'd rather have is just a concept that says, you failed this concept, and that's all it prints. Uh, because I can get much longer errors uh, than this, uh, believe me. So let's go ahead and add a concept here instead. So we want a concept like std equality uh, comparable, right? So this is, um, this is one of the concepts that we have available to us. And again, if we go into, um, so you can look at what concepts are available. So, okay, so there's a quality comparable, a quality comparable with, let's go ahead and zoom in, a um, ton of other ones as well. So first let's just try using the one, the default concept as well. And then we'll show how we can maybe write our own. So, you know, let's, um, this is actually our version. So we want to use a quality comparable, right? So that's the std version. We'll go ahead and try to do G++ again. Let's see what happens. Very simple error here. It says that we have unsatisfied constraints. What are the constraints that aren't satisfied? So it said, you know, we couldn't do, you know, equals equals, not equals, and then switch the ordering of the parameters, equals equals, and not equals. Basically saying that all of these were invalid. So I tried to check to see if this expression, you know, basically was Boolean. Okay, so, you know, that's pretty nice. So how do we write our own doing maybe the same thing? So let's go ahead and write our own called equality comparable. And so here's basically a simple implementation of this, right? Not a great implementation, but it's a very simple one, intuitive to explain. So basically it's very sim uh, similar to our, um, our implementation that we did for hashable. What we're doing is checking the expression a is equal to b, and we're just saying that is that expression convertible to a Boolean number, right? That's a very simple uh, thing we can do. Um, the other way that we could possibly do this, right? So first let's just compile this, um, you know, using this, this version. So let's see what happens. You know, basically just says that, you know, we had constraints not satisfied for this call to f mutex, you know, and there's the location of the function and basically saying, um, you know, a equals b is invalid, right? Basically just saying that that's invalid. Okay, so let's see the other way that we could implement this as well. So let's go ahead and comment these out, uncomment the other, the other version, where basically we say that a is equal to b, and then we go ahead and use another one of our built-in concepts along with our custom one. So we say that a is equal to b, it's going to require another concept, and that's the Boolean concept. And we're going to instantiate that with decal type of a is equal to b. Basically, we're checking, we want to make sure that this is a Boolean thing. We're using decal type for that. So let's go ahead and you know try this version of the concept and we get something similar. So basically we see that we've got, you know, you know of course it's going to say we've got unsatisfied constraints here. So, you know, we're trying to call it again with uh, mutex, right? Here's where that function lies. Uh, so the constraints that aren't satisfied. So we go down here and it says uh, the required expression a equals b is invalid. Um, so it requires a std boolean decal type a is equal to b. And then we have, you know, note nested requirement boolean decal type a is equal to b is not satisfied, right? So, you know, again, much cleaner errors than without the concept, all right? So again, just to give you an idea, this is how long the error is without the concept, you know, maybe a couple hundred lines or so. And then, you know, this is the one with the built-in concept, and this then with our own little small concepts, um, which not to say that they're great or they're, you know, they don't maybe cover as much as the, um, the ones implemented in the standard, but some simple ones that, you know, at least get the job done uh, in this small case, you know, again, not too difficult to write on our own. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. There will be links below to the talks and to the, um, to the videos on this subject. Um, that I reference in this uh, in this one. So here's again the concepts library. I can link that below as well. A little bit on decal type and std hash that we use for this example. So if you want to look at any of this code, it's available at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we are at our C++ 20 samples. Um, and if we go to concepts, you know, both of those are going to be available in here. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.